I don't know if anyone else is going through warfare, but the warfare is heavy. Do you want to know why it's so heavy? Because Jesus is victorious. There is much fruit. Most of it we can't see yet, but believe me, in the heavenlies, the angels are getting, uh, are, the, the, the fallen angels are getting their butts kicked. Amen. Amen. And there is war going all over. The heavenlies are alive with war right now. God is pinpointing areas, cities, people, houses for His glory. They are being assigned by the will of the Father to glorify His Son, Jesus Christ. We're going to be speaking on these things tonight. People don't realize that sometimes the warfare, even in worship, worship is the highest form of warfare there is, by the way. When you're loving Jesus, when you're honoring Him, declaring and proclaiming His glory in the song, from your heart, not here, here, you're proclaiming Him. And when you proclaim Jesus in song and you sing back, you are loving Him back. Which is what we should do when we go to church. Don't go to church to be touched. Go to church to touch. Amen. Not to people. Jesus. Then He'll touch the people. Our job is to move the hand of God. Period. Now the reason I said period is because everything else falls underneath that. You know, when you, when, when you write something, you have a topic. Then you have... The, so, so to say the introduction in other words you have the main thesis of what that is about and then underneath that is all the outline of what you're about to do well the Bible is the outline the thesis is Jesus Christ glorified enthroned and glorified forever and ever and ever as the king of glory he not only sits in his throne but he sits in the throne of the father the word of God says so the father gave him that place so now he doesn't just have the throne of grace, which is the kingdom of heaven. He has the throne of righteous judgment, which is the kingdom of God, the Father. He has both of them now. That's why John 10 talks about, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me, and I shall give them, and they shall not perish. I shall give them, they are in my hand, and I shall give them eternal life, and they are in my hand, and I shall pluck them out. They are in my Father's hand, and are able to pluck them out, for I and my Father are one. That's Kingdom of heaven, the hand of Jesus. Kingdom of God comes down over us and hides us. Okay? That's the Father. It's the Father's will to be done to glorify His Son, which were in His hand, not under His foot. Very important we understand that for what's going to get spoken. Okay? God's got me constantly speaking and teaching these things until it gets in us. It's a watering. The seeds are planted. Now it's time for God to water. And what's happening is it's beginning to take place everywhere. The prophets are beginning again to speak the same things. So for those that don't know, the prophets never miss the election, by the way. That's right. They got it right. That's right. But God knew what the devil was doing. So God let the word out to the way it was supposed to be. But what happened was the devil got in there and God let him get in there because of people. Okay? If America was right with God... They would never have allowed it to stand. But it stood because the people didn't fight back. Only remnant did. That was it. It's not done yet. Hang on and watch what God's about to do. Because it's going to be a mighty movement of God. Mighty movement of God. It's going to be, a, as he calls it, a biblical event is coming. And when it comes, the whole world will know it. Because what's happening in America is just not about America. It's about the whole world. God chose America to reveal His glory. Amen. And they turned. When it was a republic, God was glorified. When it became a democracy, it began to push Jesus out. Okay? It, it, it's true. Go look at history. Our history books are so full of lies, it isn't funny. It's indoctrination. It's mind control. Okay? And I know, I know from growing up in it, I know you all know it too, but believe me, the books are even different today from when I was a child. Okay? And much worse. Much worse. But people are waking up. Yep. The judgment of God is here. It's here. Mm -hmm. You're sitting in the judgment of God right now. Because we are the house of God. And where does judgment begin? But in the house of God. 
Okay? The judgment of God from one spectrum, damnation. To the other spectrum, love. Did you understand that? We all have eternal life. The teachings in the church do away with that. And they simply say, receive Jesus and have eternal life. What about the rest? If you look at the Bible, they don't die. They go to hell. Eternally. And we don't want nobody going there. That's why the left hand, the goats, the right hand, the sheep. Okay? How do I know that? Because Jesus sits on the right hand side of the Father. And the Father has the final say of all things. And if you're not in the blood of a lamb, you will be cast to the left side of the Father. And his will. And his will is you will go to hell if you don't receive Jesus. Plain and simple. I'm not one, and most of you know me, and there's a, a couple here that are new, and I don't mince words. I don't water them down. I speak what God gives me. I let him speak through me. And I speak spirit and truth, just like Jesus did, because I let him speak through me. I speak what he gives me. I, I, I release as he allows whatever he wants to release. We should all be doing that. Yeah. Don't try and figure out what to say. Don't try and analyze something. No, don't intellectualize. No, just let God speak. Because whoever you are talking to, that person, God knows. Saved or unsaved, he knows. And what happens in that process is that God knows exactly what to say to that person. Okay? I'm sure you've all heard stories about somebody walking up to somebody and giving them a word about something in their life that nobody knew but him and God. Do you realize the impact that has on somebody toward God? I mean, think about that for a minute. The process by which God is doing things is it, it, we've come to such a place in the Lord that it's time to lay everything down. God got me looking at 2 Chronicles 6 and 7 today which I didn't know. I don't agendize. I don't. I have no idea most of the time. 99% of the time I have no clue what God's going to speak. Today is no different. But he did give me a couple of clues. So we're going to be looking at 2 Chronicles 6 and 7, a few verses in there, which applies today, spiritually. When God teaches me out of the Word of God, I don't look at the physical Word. <clears throat> I let the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit speak to me according to what they want me to know about how they see the Word and how they gave the Word. The Father has His way of revealing things. The Son has His way of revealing things. And the Holy Spirit has His way of revealing things. And we need to look at the Word of God in those three aspects. If you look anything beyond that, you're in your mind. Don't do that. That's why in Romans 8, if you look in Romans 8, you'll find out that the mind is enmity to God. That word enmity in the King James means enemy. Why? Why would our mind and our thinking be an enemy to God? Because we seek knowledge. That's why the world says knowledge is power. No, it is not. Knowledge is a wedge between you and God. If it's not God-given. Catch that? If it's not God-given. God gives knowledge. The knowledge is that of the Father. The Son, according to Ephesians 1.17, Paul said, I wish you all had the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That is, in that one verse, is a great explanation of the mind of Christ. Okay? Which is given to us through Christ Jesus. Okay? The Spirit reveals the Father wisdom or knowledge and the Son, revelation and understanding. So you have it all. If you think about it, look at it this way. What if, now God made us in His image, right? Correct? God says the kingdom of heaven's in us, right? He, it was the first thing He did coming out of the world. He held His hand out and said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was offering us the kingdom of heaven. His hand. Jump in. Okay? Jump into the blood. Okay? What if, because if we're made in the image of God and we're, the kingdom of heaven is within us, what if God is talking about how he created us and why we need the mind of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit revealing the Father and the Son? Okay? Look at our bodies. I'm just going to touch on this real quickly because we've got a lot of stuff to cover today. The body is created, okay? we got two feet. Everything is two. You ever notice that? 
God gives us testimony and witness of everything. But it's greater than that because it has to do with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit was given to bring this forth through the mind of Christ. The Father, the Son sits on the right hand side of the Father. Do you find that interesting? And what's in the middle of it? The, I think they call it, is it, it cortex, if I remember right? Anyhow, this place right here, the back of your neck, your, your, your head turns on it, right? But in that process, God gives you eyes to see, ears to hear, and the tongue, which is split. If you look at your tongue, it's split. Okay? Spirit and truth. Okay? So, two, two nostrils, it, it's a purpose. It, what it is, it has to do with the kingdom of heaven. All of our senses were given in the spirit realm first. And they became physical. You can actually smell sin. Okay? You can. You can smell sin. You can smell the fragrance of the Lord also. Okay? That's why the Bible talks about it's a fragrance. It, it's everything. It, there's a fragrance to all things. That's why God created the oil. He wanted us to have a, 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 a fragrance of what the presence of God is about. Okay? And it's pleasing to the senses. Okay? But in that process, the Father and the Son, in between that is the Holy Spirit. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am my, for he said, for I and my Father are one. Okay? That's why Jesus said, you know, the Father said, said to Moses, I am that I am. And Jesus said to the group in John 8, I think it's verse 56, 57, 58, when he said to the scribe, person, lawyers, and these that were about, before Abraham was, I am. He didn't say, I am that I am, because he's revealing who he is in the Father. Okay? Very important we understand these things for what I'm about to get into. So the Holy Spirit runs the body. This is the, from here down, this is the Godhead. Okay? That's why if it's not of God, if you don't have the mind of Christ, guess what it is? Enmity to God, because you're going to collect knowledge, you're going to do all these things, you're going to have your own thinking, you're going to have your opinions. God doesn't care about that stuff. He loves us. He cares about us, not what we think, not what we are, what opinions and whatever we have. He's got his own, okay? That's why his ways, his thoughts are higher and greater than us. And we've got to recognize that from Isaiah. We've got to recognize that. And it's critical that we recognize that because God loves us so much, he set a path for each of us, each of us, because we're all members of the body of Christ. We're family, period, one. And I don't like, I, the word unity is great. I love it because people come together. That's unity. But if you're not, in, if you don't agree, then you're not in one accord. Yeah. That's, right. That's why I use one accord all the time. We have to come into one accord. One heart, one heart, one, one heart, one mind, one soul, one, one strength. One Lord, one God, one baptism, all of it. Yeah. One. That's, that's one accord. Because you've got to agree. <laughs> You know, there's a, I'm sure you've heard the saying, well, you know, people that disagree said, well, let's just agree that we disagree. No. You either agree with God or you don't. Period. We don't have a democracy in the kingdom of heaven. Nor in the family of God. He is the head of the body. He is the bridegroom of the bride. Period. What he says is law. That's why when you look at Matthew 4 and Luke 4, I'm curious where he's going with all this. If you look at Matthew 4 and Luke 4, you'll see where Jesus is being tempted. Okay? Now Matthew goes through it, but if you look at Luke, the third time he says, he says, I say. Or it is said. Which means I say. I am. It's the law. Whatever Jesus says is law. But grace abounds in it. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Because of the blood of the Lamb. Again, I'm going to speak it. Five is not the number of grace. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. That's how they did away with the blood covenant. Which all the churches have been doing. Well, not all. A great portion of the church. Let's go back. A great portion of the churches have done away with the blood covenant. And they're using a, a, they're using a, a theology of grace. Well, that's scratching itching ears. Without the blood covenant, you have no grace. I don't care who you are. 
And a lot of people are about to find that out. God's preparing to move. So the whole body is made in the similitude of, of the Godhead. Heart, mind, soul. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay? Father, Son, Holy They represent the Father, Son, Holy Spirit in us. And what God wants to do with us. And, and the enemy bound them hand and foot, right? So Jesus shows up. Before he showed up, they turned the fire up, right? Remember? They turned the fire up. Okay. But it was to consume them. It was to destroy them. And yet, all of a sudden, they look at all the, all the strong men that did this. They were all destroyed by the same fire. They got snared in their own devices right out of the Psalms. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is happening right now, by the way. Okay? It's happening. Just watch what's going on in Washington, D.C. and across this country and the world, but especially in America right now. Watch! Because they're already beginning to get snared in their own devices. And the American people are beginning to realize they're a bunch of liars. Okay? And they're trying to justify not doing what they promised. So, in this process, and that's the devil. Remember, the devil is the father of lies. Now you know who they serve. Okay? Plain and simple. They serve the devil. They are antichrist spirits. Okay? Now, we're going to keep praying for them. We have to. Because you don't know which ones are going to be saved by God. Okay? Now, there's a lot of people that have professed God, but they don't live godly lives. Okay? They're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Because the Holy Spirit will not put up with that while on this earth. So that's what John 14, 15, 16, and 17 is about. If you read John 14, verses 15, 16, and 17. Okay? So, in the chapters, John 14, 15, 16, and 17, John 14 is the Father. Setting things in order. John 15 is the Son. Revealing things in order. John 16 is the Holy Spirit. What they're going to do because everything's in order. And then John 17 is communion. Not taking the, not, it's not the communion of remembering what Jesus did for us, which is critical. It's critical. But don't ever take it without asking God to forgive you of your sins first. And pray for everybody else that they do the same thing. That's what it means when they take communion unworthily. They're, they're taken in sin. So make sure you do that and pray for whoever's going on because the pastors, the leaders should be getting the people to do this before they ever take communion. But, so when you look at that, the communion I'm talking about is the communion of the Godhead with us. Okay? Very critical. The sower of the seed is critical in this also. There's four positions in the, in the, the sower of the seed if you look at it. In the sower of the seed... The first three are unfruitful. Okay? They were never founded right. Okay? Some the devil took. Some they just weren't strong enough. They just didn't care. That they weren't committed. They made they, they received, but they did not commit. Okay? Very critical. Okay? Salvation is a gift. But walking out that salvation is your responsibility in obedience to the Holy Spirit. And he will change you. I often, I often preach it. Look, I look for the people when they say they got saved, I look for their lives to fall apart. Look like chaos. Religious people call them that and say that they're in sin. I hear it all the time. They, 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 they must be in sin. No! They found the real Jesus. And they got the Holy Spirit baptism. Because He's going to turn your life upside down. And then it's right side up. Okay? So, when somebody pray for people in these positions, and we better get ready, because I guarantee you right now, there are billions of people who are going to get saved in this movement of God. Okay? And they're going to glorify Jesus Christ as the King of Glory now, because it's the one thing that hasn't happened in any movement, is Jesus Christ being glorified as the King of Glory. This one's going to do that. He's going to reveal himself as he is sovereign. He is the King of Glory. And the Father not only put him in his throne, the Father put him in his throne also. He sits in both thrones. Grace, rights, and judgment. It's his. That's why in his hand, grace. Under his foot, righteous judgment. God cannot sin, nor can he ever tempt anybody. Period. I believe it's in Corinthians where it talks about where the Lord says uh, that he rebukes and chastens those that he loves. Okay? I hear people call that tough love. Well, 
Yeah, kind of it is. But why does he do that? To strengthen Somebody. Us. To strengthen. Speak up. To strengthen us. To strengthen us. That's part of it. Come on. This is, everybody should have an answer to this because it's a faceted question. There are many pieces to that question. Why would God do this? There are so, it's the entire gospel for us. In those words. Okay? If you, because we have to learn obedience. It's not just given to us. Why? Because we're flesh. We have a fleshly thinking. We have a fleshly heart that God is converting. We've got a fleshly life that God is turning upside down. Of course this is going to happen. But you know what? It is an act of love. And the rebuke is because you're not giving place to the Holy Spirit. Not 30, not 60, not 100, 1,000 fold. That's the communion God's after. That's the communion of the Godhead. And I'm not going to get into that today. Uh, I've talked about it off and on different different places, but there is, um, it's going to come out and it's going to be very detailed, scripture backed. So, there are different kinds of communions with God, which means there are different kinds of covenants. Okay? Now, when we look at things the way God looks at things, you will see a, a correlation with the wall in the spirit between the two. Because our minds cannot think like God, they must be converted. Okay? Because we have fleshly minds. And the, the, the mind in us creates a God called mammon. Okay? The mind of Christ is the mind of God. And he has to convert our thinking. He has to convert. So we think like he does. We see like he does. We talk like he does. We hear like he does. Everything we do is Jesus. Because that's the Father's will. We must be Jesus' mirror to the world. As Jesus is our mirror to us. So I often in teaching, and I keep watering this, is when you go look in the mirror, don't look at you. Don't. Look at Jesus in you. And then tell yourself how much he loves you. Then tell yourself you love you. Very powerful. Very powerful. And you're going to get all kinds of feelings out of this. <laughs> okay? And you're going to be very nervous. And you're going to hesitate, but do it anyhow. And do it every day. Every day. God created us the way we are. And it's amazing the studies that have gone on over this and how we are never satisfied with how we look. It's amazing, isn't it? And we all do it. Come on, guys, girls. See? We all do it. Yes. Okay? But we have to understand something. If you really look at it, and the Lord's the one who showed this to me, we care more about how others see us because of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our own self-image is our worst enemy. Because mm -hmm. we just think, the devil gets us to think about all these different things people see or think about you. Well, guess what that does? That takes your eyes off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now you're not worthy. You know, in Matthew 7, verse 1 and 2, it talks about, literally, it talks about, judge not, but it also says to forgive, and then be forgiven. God gave me a revelation on that that so impacted me that every day, to this very day, is still changing my life. Forgive yourself. Then you can be forgiven. If you don't forgive yourself, you think God's going to hear your prayers of forgiveness? Kind of makes you a hypocrite, doesn't it? Do you know what that's called? Blindness. Self-deception. Which are the two hardest things to break in the spirit realm. Those two things is an unholy sword 
to divide you from God. And then here comes this three-strand unholy cord called steal, kill, destroy. The thief. And he comes to steal the image of God in you. Literally, we're made in the image of God, right? It's a blessing. But he comes to steal that. And then in the process, while you're out of that position, kill you. <coughs> and so, when he kills you, guess what? You're destroyed. Wow. Because you walked away from God. Now you know what this movement about is about. That's why it must begin in the house of God first. God got to get his people in order right now for the billions that are coming in. Where are they going to go? Who's going to, who's going to lift them up? Who's going to mentor them? Who's going to help them find Jesus? Who's going to help them learn the Holy Spirit and receive the Holy Spirit and know what gifts are in them so they can be part of the body to keep the body strong? When they stop doing the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the body fell apart. When I got saved, God told me to go to the phone book and look up the churches. And I looked there. He said, I'll count every division there. That was in 1995. August 27. Guess what I found? 66 divisions of the church. 66. Now add the number of men to that. I'm not giving the devil any credit, but boy, he knew what to do. He took Jesus... And what he said, when he, when he accused Jesus of doing witchcraft, which is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, Beelzebub, he did it by the prince of, of devils, Beelzebub, who is against the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I hate to say this, but I have to. Beelzebub is in charge right now over America. Yeah. In the church. That's why the gifts are not being taught, they are not being used, they are not being practiced in front of everybody. In the church, not in some back room somewhere. That this is why God is moving the church back into the home. It's a sign of the time. You know, America, we've been pretty spoiled. Other countries, you die for the gospel. Yes. And it's coming here. But not yet. Not yet. We've got work to do. God raised up America for a reason. That's why God put USA in the middle of Jerusalem. J-E-R, Father, U-S-A, Son, L-E-M, Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Jerusalem. That is the city of the King. And the whole process, what God did was to bring Jesus into such a place that he not only sat in his own throne, was glorified by the Father, and then came back and gave the Holy Spirit. But the Father, because he was obedient to the will of God, he obeyed the Father, gave the Holy Spirit, fire came down, and he got the Father's throne also because of obedience. He was blessed to bless us. Nobody ever takes the time. I've had conversations with people and they have no clue what I'm talking about sometimes because they have no clue who Jesus really is. Mm -hmm. They see him as a figurehead and they do not know him spiritually. Yes, we are to become spiritual, but we are now stepping into a new phase and a whole new shift. The entire body and bride of Jesus Christ is shifting into the Spirit. We must become spirit now, like Philip. Translation is the Holy Spirit moving you. Physically, spirit, physically. That's what happened with Philip when his work was done. He had to move him. Well, they didn't have jets. No, he didn't need jets. He got the Holy Spirit. We need to get ready for this. Because the Holy Spirit, there's a day coming. It's already beginning. That's what this new passport is about. If you don't take a COVID, you can't travel. They're trying to work this in. But God is causing a wrinkle. That's why it hasn't been implemented yet. Because it's not time. These things happening, it's not time. And we've got to rejoice in that, that it's not time. Yes. We can't get anxious. We can't be upset. We've got to stop being angry at all the stuff that's going on. It has to happen. God is using this to wake up America. God is using it to wake up the world because they're watching us. And God 
is watching us also to see how and what we're going to do. So far the church has failed miserably. But a remnant. America has failed in the church. Because they're apostate. They have no clue how to stand for Jesus Christ and the gospel and the sake of his people. And the unsaved. There was a few. But you've got to consider how many churches are there in America. And how many Christians. Millions. And how many of those millions actually stood up and took a stand? Toward the end, some, some things start happening. But we got to realize Ephesians um, 6. We got to realize what's going on with that. It, the armor is Jesus Christ. We're putting on Jesus Christ. Every aspect of what we need in war. And then after having done all, we're to stand. Yes. So why do we cower? <laughs> why did we why did we cower? Jesus. COVID is a man-made plague. It's not an accident. And God is using it. God did not create it. Man did. Right. And it became a judgment on this earth. And God used it as such, trying to wake up the church. There's so many lies being put out about this stuff going on worldwide. It's the new world order. And they're blind, and they're making everybody else blind with all the lies. All the statistics are lies. Every one of them. In fact, the CDC came out and admitted once that the, the, the figures were wrong. Yes. Yes. It didn't take long for that to leave the internet, by the way. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The majority of the deaths in the COVID is not covid Amen. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. COVID didn't kill these people. Their conditions killed them. Their sin killed most of them. We got to recognize we serve a God that with thanksgiving no deadly thing can touch us. They cannot harm us. Yes. Whether we eat it, smell it, breathe it, Taste it, drink it, it doesn't matter. It cannot harm us. The Bible says so. But do we believe that? Yes. And if we do, why aren't we standing up and fighting back? We're coming to a place of a holy fire being prepared to come down. God's judgment will start in the church and the whole world.